Right, what I have here is a Retina 1A camera that needs a service. So I'm going to strip it down. So here's where I'll start. Open the back of the camera, put a screwdriver through the fork of the rewind shaft. Turn the rewind shaft with my fingers, which is the normal procedure, and it didn't work, so I'm going to put my tool in there. and remove that. Now normally, most commonly you'll find that these screws actually screw into the rewind knob and um, as a result the whole lot comes out together. In this case, for a brief period of time, Kodak through drilled the body of the rewind knob so that it's relying on friction from having been done up very tight. Oh, it was a bird just hitting the window. It's Mrs. Blackbird by the looks of it. Oh, she's a bit stunned, but she's away. Done. And so it just relies on doing that up very tight to provide enough friction for that rewind knob to do its job. Right, so I'll put my parts aside on a tray. And the advanced knob, I normally just turn a quarter of a turn, use my pin spanner tool to undo that screw. You can use a very stiff pair of tweezers, possibly. You could use a pair of needle nose pliers with the tips suitably mutilated. That is very stiff on that shaft. I'm just trying to get this shaft off, the handle off. Right, so I'll pop some pieces in the container, ready to go into the cleaner. I don't normally clean the pool that way. They're a bit fragile, and as you may know, replacements are very expensive. Anything with paint on never goes through the ultrasonic cleaner because it comes back so clean that there's no paint on it. The advanced lever, likewise, that never goes through the cleaner. That gets cleaned by hand, and I'm just checking the action at the end of film catch there to make sure that's nice and smooth. That's good. Two screws on the top, one each end of the body. Everything's a little bit tight on this camera. Um, may indicate that Whoever serviced it last was a bit heavy handed, but difficult to tell. It's much more common for screws to be loose on cameras. Well there's the top cover, and we'll clean that up later. It's a bit scungy looking, but um, the chrome is relatively good. Take out the shutter, advance, uh, shutter release, the little collar, the spring I pop in with the screws, there's the main body, there's the tip. The film release button comes off, that can go in the cleaner, its spring can go in with the screws. There's a bit of sand visible on the top of the body here, that's probably fairly general, um, it's probably all through the camera. I'll remove the rewind assembly complete. That's the outer piece. On this particular model, the inner is trapped, the outer. is a um, screw there that uh, fixes that. And we'll see if we can get it out. That allows it to come rise up through the top. So that's all ready for the cleaner. Okay, we can remove the shutter now. So I'm using my Belgian tool. And 
and I'll pop the shutter to one side. Now in this case, there were no shims here at all. Uh, sometimes with cameras that's because they never required any when they were made. At other times it means they've been lost. Um, either case it doesn't make any difference as long as the focus has been correctly adjusted by moving the focus scale ring on the outer helical. That can compensate for any lack of uh, shims that may have parted company. Right, with that gone, we should be able to lift off the gear on the top of the film advance and that definitely goes into the cleaner. The rack should slide out and that certainly needs to be clean. There are three screws. One here, one here and one down in here. Now they hold that piece on the top that guide for the rack. Yeah, these screws are unusually tight. Take care not to lose this spring. It's an odd shaped thing. Don't lose it. Hard to come by. If it flicks across the room, you're not going to be very happy about trying to fix it. Those screws can go there, that piece can go in. This little pawl here, that, that acts as the ratchet which can, controls the forward and reverse movement of the advanced lever. There's its return spring. It's very much like the one that was in the uh, film release, under the film release button. There's slightly different diameters. You'll find that the larger diameter one doesn't slide neatly in the tube for the film release button. Um, you want this narrower one there. Right, that piece can come off. That's for the cleaner. There's a fine coil spring here. That can go in with the screws. There's that drive dog. And there's that main gear there. This piece there's three pieces here, four if you count the spring, I suppose. We've got the screw post with its return spring. There's the little pawl. Now that's to stop the film advance from being able to back up, so it'll only revolve in one direction. And there's a slight tiny spacer ring there, or collar. Here we can take the top of this off the film advance mechanism here. Most unusual for a camera that's been together for a long time to have the screws so tight. That piece comes off, goes into the clown. Shake out this clutch. This clutch mechanism, its job is to make sure that the film take-up spool is not locked to the rotation of the film sprocket. There needs to be some slippage of it available there. Effectively what happens with these cameras is the sprocket wheel advances the film. That's what meters how much film is shifted with each advance and that's what does the main pulling of the film through the camera. The take-up spool takes up the slack. It'll only, and it's, it can, as the film builds up on the take-up spool, it needs to requ it requires less of a rotation to take up a whole frame of film, and so it has to be able to slip. And that's exactly what happens. If that clutch is too stiff, you end up with torn film. Right. Well, that's the top of the camera dealt with. At the bottom of the camera, we need to peel up the leather. So I'm using a scalpel to get under this. And I'm sort of prizing it up more than scraping underneath it. 
The covering on this camera is leather. It's fairly robust. Now on these cameras, this boss here is riveted on after the leather is attached. So you can't get the leather off all the way. And so it's futile to strip the leather right down to the far end of the camera if you don't need to. In an ideal world you'd strip that leather right off. If you can strip it right off you can get it to go back down nice and smooth without a mark. Because you know, can't get them to strip right off on these cameras you'll very often end up with a residual sort of mark across your leather after it's all been glued back down where things just don't quite match. It's very subtle. If you don't didn't know what to look for, you wouldn't see it. Anyway, back to business. There are two brass headed screws here. Now, you can see they're covered in green scunge. Now that verdigree is a corrosion product. And it's been generated by chemicals in the leather and the dissimilar metals. Here you've got aluminium. The screws were obviously brass. The casting itself is aluminium. Yeah, a little bit of moisture, a little bit of humidity. The chemicals in the leather will help promote that corrosion process and you end up with that green blobby scunge. That's what forms zeiss bumps. And it's a funny green stuff, it's, it's, it's waxy in consistency and I suppose you'd probably say that it was a, uh, a soap. As my chemistry teacher used to always go on, the soap was the soap was the salt, soap was the sodium salt of a fatty acid or some such, as I recall. But it has got a soapy consistency, so almost certainly that's what's happening there. Right, I need my special pliers to remove this thing here. These pliers have been suitably altered to grip that rewind button firmly without marking it, and that allows me to unscrew it from the rewind shaft. So we've got three components, a washer, a spring and the button. The button can go in the cleaner. We have three screws holding the advanced in position, the advanced shaft. Now that, there are two different styles of advanced shaft used. One just has a cross pin across the bottom of the shaft, like this. The other style has a cross on the bottom, a four-armed cross. And in both cases, that rod, or the arms of the cross, When they rotate, they hit the latch for the um, rewind button and free it up. So as, as soon as you advance the film, the rewind button pops back out. Okay, so far so good. We've got the, all the film advance mechanism out. Now I want to take it off the front door. And there are two screws for that. These screws form the hinge, they're small, easily lost, do your best not to lose them, one at the top. There may or may not be a washer in that hinge position.
It doesn't look like we've got one today. All right. To get this door off the front standard, apply a bit of upward force and you can spring it off at the top and then lift it off at the bottom. There is probably a paper washer. Oh, there's that washer I just mentioned and said I couldn't see. It was there all along. These paper washers, they're just top and bottom here on those pins. They provide a little bit of friction so that the door doesn't just sort of flap around in the breeze when it's open. Uh, right, with the front door removed, we can strip down the focus mount. Now I'm going to start by removing this cover at the front here. Two screws, they're chrome. Try not to bugger them up. They're only chrome brass. The screws in there. This piece does not go through the cleaner. The green paint and the MX symbols would soon disappear. These two components do. Here, first you've got to scribe some alignment marks on your focus scale ring so it line, you know where to put it back relative to the outer helical. And I've scratched two lines through there at an angle so I can recognise them because there are already a few scratch marks on there from previous attempts. That piece can come off. That doesn't go through the cleaner because the black paint would disappear. Four screws. Hold the focus scale ring to the outer helical. Those screws are countersunk screws. Um, they just bite into that edge. You can see the spring's got a little bit of distortion on it there, so this is city head of how I'd like that one. Right, we've got four screws here. Down in the holes, there are black screw heads. Those screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. There's four of those. When we get the last of them undone, the bellows will probably drop back away. And they do. Four large chrome screws or nickel plated screws at each one at each corner. They hold the focus assembly to the front standard. Lift those screws out. Alright, let's gather up those last remaining of those three those black screws that were holding the bellows on. Just want to make sure I've got those out where I can find them. That's good. I don't want to lose any of these screws. The focus mount itself. There are six screws hold this together. Countersunk head screws are the same as the screws that held the focus scale ring to the outer helical. That plate holds it all together, stops things falling to bits. Here's the main mount. That doesn't go through the cleaner because it would bugger up the paint or the felt or both. That gets cleaned by hand. This piece, the inner and outer helical. You need to make a mark on these so that you can put them back in the right position. Now, when the inner and outer are even, when they're nice and flush, there's two lines scribed across there by someone else, and they'll do me nicely as an alignment mark. So that job's done. So we haven't got much more to come out of the body now. We want the, all of the struts assembly out. There are four screws, one top and bottom, and two on the ends. See if we can get it loose. 
No, that's too tight. It's going to need some extra help. Back in a second. Right, let's just pop that up on a block of wood, get my best rough screwdriver, putting some tension on that, give it a couple of taps, and the screw is loose. Let's remove that. The same on the base of the camera. This one's usually worse because it's usually lacquered in as well from the, uh, the adhesive. Again the same treatment, a couple of sharp wraps. No, it needs a bit more. Okay. Now yeah, we're in business. Don't overdo the hammering. You fold in the base of the camera. You don't want to do that. Right. Let's see if I can get the ones out from inside the back of the camera. There are two at this end where your film cassette goes. Let's see what they're like. Very tight. I'll see if I can get that done. I'll do that off camera because I need to hold that between my knees. Alright, they're loose. Get those screws out. You could spend all day putting drops of drops of solvent on those screws, it wouldn't loosen them at all, they need a thump. Right, so lift out the front struts mechanism. That'll get cleaned just as it is, it won't go through the cleaner. Lift out the shaft, that transmits the action of the cocking rack across to the shutter. There's the little bracket that holds it in position. And here is a spacing washer that went at the base. There's a return spring here for the shutter release mechanism. And we're just about down to the last of it now. We'll take out the sprocket shaft. There's a single screw here. Push the shaft up from the base, lift out the sprocket. That's basically the camera stripped down and ready for cleaning. So this container of parts now goes into a, a tin along with some solvent. Um, it's uh, a clean painter's product, it's called uh, wax and grease remover and it's very good at loosening up that very thick waxy grease that's on the focus mechanism in particular so I'll get that done um, I notice on this camera that the leatherette or the leather is peeling on the front here now that'll be a sign of some corrosion, there'll be corrosion under there and uh, I'll strip that off completely, get rid of that corrosion rubbish and then glue it back down. Yeah, it's just, it's not very common to find leather coming off cameras like that. With the Retina 1A and 2A, you have to be particularly careful where the leather goes past that strap lug. It's inclined to tear at that point. 
You don't remove this leather unless you've got a very good reason to do so. Oh, I do have a very good reason because I want to get rid of this nasty powdery corrosion product underneath. That's where the aluminium is corroded and uh, let go of the adhesive. The other side will be the same. Well, it doesn't look bad, but I can guarantee that's the same. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Get that off there too. You can see I'm using the scalpel for this, but I'm not cutting underneath the leather. I'm sort of levering it off. Don't overdo it. You don't want to... Uh, old leather can be often be very brittle. You can just break it in half if you overdo this, or if the leather is really bad it's going to fall to bits anyway. See if I can get under that back edge. I can see a couple of Zeiss bumps here. I'll decide whether or not I'm going to attack the leather on the camera back. Oh, that's a bit... Uh... Sometimes this leather on the front is quite thin makes it easy to tear. And we don't want to tear it. That's it. And you can see green scunge here busy forming the Zeiss pumps. Alright, well the body's stripped down. As I was saying before the camera ran out of memory, the Zeiss bumps show whenever there's a brass rivet through the aluminium body under leather covering. There's also a brass rivet here and here. Another prime spot for Zeiss pumps on the Retina 1A 2A. I'm checking the back of the camera to see what the Zeiss bump situation is like. Generally that's pretty good. I can see a couple of little bumps underneath the rivets at the hinge end. But I don't know whether it's worth delving in there to try and get rid of those. And there's no large ones on the back. So that'll probably do quite well. Now I can take my parts and clean them. So these parts go into the, uh, the solvent for cleaning. As I might have previously mentioned, that's a uh, painter's product and it's called uh, wax and grease remover. I'll soak in there for a couple of hours. It'll loosen up all that wax and other crap. And then they go into the ultrasonic cleaner. And while all that's happening, I can clean up the other components, clean all the dust and grit out of the body and probably service the shutter finally bringing it all back together again and that's it